On paper, Blossom is pretty bad. Fang's really got no stats to be happy about other than like a base 100 special defense, but this cute little bastard does have some tricks we can use. Its ability Chlorophyll is able to double its speed in the sun, which actually ends up making it pretty quick. We can then set up with Quiver Dance to give us some offensive firepower, and now it's actually ready to destroy. Stab Solar Beam in the sun obliterates things, and we've also got some coverage with Sludge Bomb, along with Weather Ball that becomes a 100 base power fire move in the sun. Blossom may look like the most innocent Pokemon of all time, but if you're not prepared for this thing, it will make you pay. Alright, look, I hope you brought both, you know, some sunglasses and a raincoat, because it's about to get some weird weather up in here. I, of course, am working with an extremely fire sun team, and we're going up against what looks to be a pretty scary rain team. So that always makes for... Quite the interesting dynamic, their weather sweepers are of course quite a bit scarier, but I have the power of freaking Blossom along with like a Scovillain in the sun, and I just think that they are some fun weird dudes. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Tornadus. Now, I figure this thing is here to do a couple of things. First of all, look gross with its weird purpley veiny arms, but also it's going to do some prankster shenanigans, you know, setting up, I imagine it's probably like a secondary rain setter. I also think that he probably has the taunt, but I'm going to try the stealth rock anyway, right, because you don't really lose anything. They do in fact have the taunt, and he's looking pissed off over there, does not want me to set up these stealth rocks. And hey, that's mostly fine. I do want to try to prioritize getting those up eventually just because of the Pelipper switch-ins. It also turns out Buddy has nuts to steal. Goes for a metronome, which is hilarious because, you know, with that prankster ability, it guarantees that they go first. Actually ends up getting a pretty solid roll and gets the super fang. So that kind of worked out nicely. And prankster metronome is an absolute balls-to-the-wall strategy. And I gotta, I gotta admit, I respect it. But they're actually going to end up wagging the finger again. Go for another metronome here. It can literally get anything, and it actually turns out it gets Memento. So, while it does end up knocking itself out, it does give me the minus two on offenses, and it kind of is like, that kind of works out. It's like a kind of weird suicide lead. They do take themselves out, but also, you know, they got me down to half, and I do want to try to conserve Swampert as much as possible here. Being at half isn't super ideal. Luckily, I do have leftovers, because this thing's really the only defensive mon I have. Uh, to be able to try to sponge a hit from their sweepers. So, now they're going to switch into whatever they like. Turns out they're going to go into my arch nemesis, Regan Breloom over here. This thing breathes on me, and the Swampert's dead. So you already know I'm going to switch his ass out of here, and I'm going to go right into two of my best homies. This is Hob and Nero. The Hob and Nero Pepper comes in, got his little jeans on, looking amazing. But I come in mostly just because you know, I figure a spore is likely coming, and you cannot put the Peppers to sleep. So... I'm now in kind of a weird offensive position here, where Scovillain can't really get going. While I do have the matchup against the Breloom, they can just easily switch in Pelipper in rain kind of ruins my day. So I actually expect them to switch into Pelipper here. I'm going to make that prediction and actually end up switching myself into the Grafii. Now it turns out they actually stay in and go for the Swords Dance, which now this Breloom is sharp and a whole lot more scary. But this is kind of still fine because I am a prankster myself. I can actually go for the Encore and be like, yeah, actually, that was sweet. Go ahead and go ahead and bust that out a few more times for me because I do not want to be swept by a Breloom. So they're obviously now locked into the Swords Dance here, and Grafia is on this team. He basically is here as a Sunsetter. With the Prankster, I can set up Sunny Days um, in a high-priority bracket, and I also have the Heat Rock to make it stay around for a bit. So at this point, I feel like it's pretty likely that they're going to switch out here, so predicting that, I can then go for the Parting Shot, and it's just a bit too early to try to get my own Sun up because, as you see, uh, the Pelipper does come in, and it does make it rain with the drizzle. So, I go for that parting shot, gonna drop the offenses here, and allow me a little bit of a better matchup. So, of course, in these games, it's always really interesting going up against the opposite weather, because it kind of comes down to who can, you know, preserve their weather setters the best, and we want the weather on our side. So, this is where Swampert has a pretty good matchup, and then I know that I can take an attack here, and also, I would like to set up my Stealth Rock. I kind of have a couple different options. I could either go for that Stealth Rock, which is what I'm going to do, or opt for uh, something like the Knockoff to try to get rid of its Damp Rock and make it so that the rain doesn't stick around the next time it comes in, or at least as long. So, I do go for the Stealth Rock here, and they're going to end up U-turn pivoting into the Floatzel. This thing's got his Water Wings ready for a nice little day at the water park, and I... 
am scared. This thing in the, in the rain with that swift swim is obviously going to be faster than everything, but also it hits like an absolute truck with a wave crash. And if there's literally anybody that can handle it on this team, it's probably going to be Swamper. Um, but unless I'm like at full, I don't have a great chance. As also, the, this is what Floatzel likes to do. Likes to gush water out of his freaking dome. And with the Terra Water, it's now going to be way scarier. Got all the multipliers, the boost from the rain, um, and the, even the Terra. Wave Crash is going to hurt. A lot of the time, you also see these as Choice Banded. And uh, I am certainly going to die there. <laughs> Down goes the Swampert. So, I'm in a little bit of a bad spot here. But it's mostly just because of that rain. With the Swift Swim, I'm kind of useless here. But, of course... Our boy Little Goop here with his crazy little paint fingers is going to have something to say about that. So I go into the Grafaya here and I can just go ahead and go right for the sunny day. With the sunny day up, I'm going to turn that rain into sun and the plants around here are like, the hell is going on? You, you don't know what the hell's happening. But this is super important because now it's going to actually reduce the water damage. So on the next wave crash, I'm actually just barely able to hang on. This Grafaya is trained to be specially defensive, but the help from our friendly sun is going to actually even allow us to take the big physical attack. So, at this point now, I can go for the parting shot. Prankster allows me to get that off. And uh, Floatzel went from extremely powerful to nice and nice and dampened here. We can we can deal with this. As long as the sun is up, we're feeling pretty good. Now I can tuck the Grafaya in the back and ensure that uh, I have potential to set up my sun later. Because surely, I can't quite get my sweepers going yet. Just because of the fact that, that Pelipper is just way too healthy over there. So I now decide to switch right into skill villain, knowing that especially after that parting shot, I can take an attack here just by just barely by the damn threat of my genes over here, just because <laughs> skill villain has like a base 65 defense. This guy is paper thin out here, but the tables have turned because now I am fast under the sun. We now have the power. So I do imagine Floatzel is gonna switch out here as it does still have some utility left in him and this asshole comes in. So Pelipper, old toilet bird, is gonna take some stealth rock chip and the reason why I go for the seed bomb here is to just get as much chip as possible. So I go for that seed bomb, it's actually not gonna do a whole lot of damage here, but here's the plan. So I know that I'm gonna be faster even without the sun up, so I'm gonna go for a second seed bomb here. Well. It doesn't quite end up knocking this thing out. It is going to actually put it in range to where the next time it switches in, it's going to die to the Stealth Rock. So that's why that Stealth Rock play was extremely important with Swampert earlier. And now it feels like while well, they're able to switch into a Basque Legion with the rain up, um, I'm definitely on the defensive here. But having the guaranteed shot to be able to get my son up later is going to be super helpful. So I do have to let Scoville go down to a last respects. There's nothing that wants to switch in and take that. And the bell peppers are just going to get their ass sautéed. So that is fine. And now I have uh, a position where I'm like, okay, time to turn the old weather around for myself. This is going to be this is going to be helpful. So I can go into Grafai once again. They don't have hazards up, so I'm able to stay alive. And I figure I should be able to get this sun up, and that is going to enable our Blossom in the back. However, Basque Legion is going to be carrying the Aqua Jet. And while I do have a uh, high priority with the Prankster, this thing is faster, so it's able to get off that Aqua Jet. And that is bad news. So while it's, it's seeming pretty bleak for our sunny weather plans, I do actually have a little bit of a backup here and it comes in the form of this little dancing fella. As I come in, I'm able to get the Intimidate, which is actually super important, but what's more important is that uh, this thing is both thick as hell. I'm able to barely hang on the rain boosted wave crash and now I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and do myself a little sun dance, baby and that is gonna get rid of the rain. And while this is the secondary sun setter on the team, I don't have the heat rock to be able to keep the sun around for eight turns. I now am put on a timer to where I need to get my sun shenanigans going as quick as possible here. So that gets rid of that, and I don't really have any option to switch here as it just kinda let the uh, hit on top go down. But I did exactly what I needed to do in coming in, barely being able to live an attack, uh, but more importantly, now the sun is up for our little hula friend here. I can go into the Blossom and try to take advantage of this sun as much as possible. So we come in looking adorable. However, this thing is an absolute devil and it's gonna show you why. So. Uh, I have the option to Quiver Dance here, but it feels like, honestly, I don't really need it at this point. So I opt instead just to go for the Solar Beam, as they're actually just going to stay in. They try to just grab some chip as they're pretty much guaranteed to go down here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and beam his ass with the power of the sun. And uh, no more rain for you, Mr. Fishy. Down goes the Basque Legion. Extremely scary, and uh, I'm feeling like I'm actually in a great position here 
with the blossom with the life orb we're able to hit hard enough to where i feel uh, pretty confident that we can we can make it happen out here so now they decide to go into pelipper and as it comes in it just immediately gets gets stabbed in the beak by some stealth rocks and does die which is important because you do in fact not get that drizzle ability to come up unless you survive so the stealth rock does exactly what we need it to do and we now have a very well positioned little hula fella so uh, they decide to go into the breloom here while it looks like i wouldn't have coverage i do in fact not only have coverage in two forms but i also uh, do have the sun boosted weather ball i'm actually going to boost it even further because while i don't have my quiver dance up i figure my best bet at damage here is to go ahead and light this damn thing on fire. Sometimes it's what you gotta do. We go ahead and go for that Terra Fire, and now we have a very strong fire attack with the Weather Ball, and we're just over here sauteing some mushrooms. Down goes the Breloom, and we are showing why the Blossom must not be slept on out here. So, while this is real nice, the bad news is the sun is in fact running out out here. And uh, we do actually have one more turn left of the sunlight. So now they decide to switch back into the float soul. This thing does actually come in on the stealth rock and survive. I actually wasn't sure if this thing was going to be able to be able to come in again. But uh, it does survive. But the bad news for him is now I would rather just have died to the stealth rock. Because buddy, you're going to have to in fact take a solar beam to the damn chin. And uh, we're just out here flexing our solar powers on him. And down goes the Floatzel. So, they are now down to one Pokemon left. But here's the thing. Our work is not done. Because while the Floatzel going down is amazing, we are going to, in fact, run out of sunlight here. So, Blossom is just cut short of being able to outspeed their final Pokemon, which is going to be the... And they switch into this thing as it comes in. It does take the Stealth Rock damage, which is important because it brings it down to half. And obviously, you know, the Weather Ball does kill here, but it is going to be able to outspeed me. Now, also... What's really bad about Vivian is it is able to go for the sleep powder now. Just because of the fact that I, of course, am no longer grass type, it does connect and I get my ass put to sleep. So I am quite scared in this spot because um, this thing is definitely going to start quiver dancing and we do not want the Uno reverse pulled out here. So at this point, I do have a plan because knowing that this thing is likely just going to go for the setup here, what I can actually do is switch into my trusty rubber flaming chicken here. And that is because while this thing is definitely going to need some boost to be able to knock me out with a hurricane, if it can even connect. Also, I am choice scarf. So even at plus one, I know that I can outspeed this. Now, they're actually going to end up going for the substitute. So we've got a substitute just floating midair over here. And uh, again, <laughs> Vivian behind a substitute is quite scary because anything with the potential to start quiver dancing can easily just pull the game around. But I am actually faster. I can go for that flamethrower. First of all, roast and toast the hell out of the damn bean bag. And now surely this thing is going to go for the quiver dance. So they don't actually know that I'm going to be choice scarf at this point, which is why uh, we are still in a great position here. So they get that special attack boost along with the speed and the special defense. But at plus one, I've got myself a built in plus one with that choice scarf. And all I have to do is uh, be able to outspeed here and finish them off with the flamethrower. So Belossum being put to sleep was you know, a sleeping duck to be able to be set up on, but Hot Wings comes in clutch. I can now outspeed even with that Quiver Dance, and that is going to finish off the Butterfly and also finish off the game. So we love to see the Blossom making the difference there, just straight up raw dogging it without the Quiver Dances, and also just against a team uh, that seems to have the more reliable weather is, uh, is always good. So that's going to be the end of that game, but you already know Blossom is back for uh, some vengeance. Now, this is a team we're going up against that has a lot of potential with a lot of scary sweepers. Especially the fact that they have the Orthworm with the potential with the Shed Tail to enable some setup even further. It definitely, needless to say, I'm out here at risk. But let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so this time, Buddy's just going to straight up lead off with the Orthworm. Didn't even take me out to dinner first, just pulling out the worm. That is fine. I guess it's not really that fine because as I have the Swamp Root here, I obviously cannot Earthquake this thing. It just straight up eats dirt. And <laughs> I am definitely going to get Shed Tailed on. But I decide Stealth Rock is going to be super valuable for me here. There's things that uh, I have the potential to, you know, break a Focus Sash on like a Cloister. And just in general, the rocks are going to be nice. So, Guy does just go ahead and chop his own tail off. And then just enjoys a nice little uh, a little lunch there with the Citrus Berry. Thing is invisible currently. But uh, it does have that Citrus Berry, which now enables it to potentially get up a second Shed Tail later. But it's like, damn. I'm just going to immediately have to address the fact that now I have to deal with the sweeper behind the substitute and uh, life comes at you quick. So they do decide to go into the cloister here who does take some nice chip from that stealth rock and surely this thing is going to start smashing. Just straight up bust his own shell 
And uh, this thing is extreme, a massive threat. The good news is, however, I can now go for an Earthquake, and that is going to break the substitute, but also, if there's any Pokemon on my team to be able to kind of address the sweeping Cloyster, it's gonna be the Swampert. I have uh, some solid defense investment on this thing, and uh, it's looking like it's gonna be close if I can take a Skill Link ass attack here. So I go for that Earthquake, it is gonna break the substitute. Also, important note, we did not see the White Herb on this thing, meaning it was likely Focus Ash, and it does have that minus one defense. I'm thinking, hey, maybe I can live in attack here and get an Earthquake off and knock it out. Time to see what's gonna happen as they go for that Icicle Spear. Of course, it is gonna hit five times, and this is why Anchor Arms is the GOAT. We are barely able to live with 12 HP, which is absolutely insane. Does allow us now to fire off the Earthquake, and even at minus one defense, this thing is thick as hell. That shell is no joke. It's able to barely hang on there, but the defense investment over the attack is what allowed me to even be able to make that happen, so I'm totally fine with it, as now I do just kind of need to sack off the Swampert, as of course, nothing is switching into this. So, as I do go down here, that is mostly fine, because I do have a couple different options. I could, like, go in and set up a Sun, and then be able to be faster that way, or I could just do it the old-fashioned way, and that is with these damn fists, baby. More like clubs than fists, but uh, I can bring in Beyblade, uh, who does have the priority with the Mach Punch, and uh, just punch him right in the old ghostly face, and that takes care of it. So luckily, we have not been destroyed by a Cloyster, but there's still a lot of big threats uh, to be scared of here. So on the empty battlefield, they're going to end up going into Yan Mega. Now, Yan Mega is also a fella that does not like the Stealth Rock. It's not going to be Heavy Duty Boots, as it is going to take 50% uh, from that, which is amazing. And also, if on top has no business dancing around out here, I'm gonna end up switching into the Grafaii. Now, one of the interesting things about this team, I like the fact that Grafaii is the Sunsetter, because it's kind of, it's a mod that you don't really know what it wants to do to you. So they decide to go for the Detect here just to get that speed boost, which is fine. And that's actually pretty solid for me because I can actually just go for an Encore, Prankster it first, and be like, hey, actually, I'm gonna need you to Detect again, as uh, that, looked, that looked crazy. Confetti flies all over the place. And the guy's feeling great about himself. He's like, damn, you like my detect that much? All right. And uh, of course, it is going to fail. So uh, this Grafaii is, is great in grabbing a position. Not only just with that Encore, but now I can set up a sunny day for free. And uh, it's a beautiful day on the beach. The grannies are going to need to bust out the sunscreen because it is going to get bright out here. As uh, they are going to go back into the Orthworm, who, of course, does wall the hell out of a Grafaii. But that is fine. I'm just going to go for that sunny day. And now we have some sun to work with that I need to try to capitalize here. So, here's a Brain Blast. I'm thinking to myself, hold on a second. I can actually make something happen here, potentially with a copycat. Um, but I need to not go first. So I'm thinking this thing surely goes for another Shed Tail. I know what this Orthworm's about. So I'm actually going to click Sunny Day a second time. You may be thinking, that is stupid. It is stupid. But uh, it potentially brings up a position here where they could go for a Shed Tail and then... I'm like, hey, I could copycat a Shed Tail of my own. It actually does not end up happening because it instead just goes for the body press. And now I just look like an idiot with my double sunny days, but it's fine. If, if, they, if I was able to somehow copycat the uh, freaking Shed Tail, I'm going to take that damn opportunity. But uh, it doesn't happen. It, all we did was burn a turn of sun, and that is fine. Because now I can actually decide to go into the Blossom here. I know that this thing's highest damage will probably be... Uh, with that body press, but I'm figuring I can I can take that. Blossom's thick as hell out here. It does do a nice little chunk to the point where it kind of makes me question if I want to set up the quiver dance here. But I'm like, you know what? It, this, I'm on the, this is the Blossom's freaking natural habitat out here. I'm gonna go for that quiver dance. I get that uh, special attack boost along with the speed, and uh, I can take a body press to the point where. Blossom is gonna do some work here. First of all, I can go for the Weather Ball here and uh, absolutely toast up the Orthworm and take care of that thing. So no more Shed Tail, but also, you know, I do still have, according to my calculations here, at least two uh, more Life Orb Recoil turns. So before Blossom goes down, we are gonna punch some holes out here at the likes of no one's seen Blossom do. So they actually are gonna go back into the Yan Mega here and it does live on one HP with that odd HP amount. It's able to take two switch-ins, but I am faster. I can go for another Weather Ball and take care of the Yan Mega, which is a pretty big threat out of the way. Um, and uh, we are rolling. So I do still have one more attack left in the Blossom, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some damage regardless. As they now decide to go into the Moltres. So this thing comes in here, and I'm kind of questioning at plus one, do I kill here? And I'm I'm like, wait, hold on. This is. Freaking Blossom we're talking about out here, baby. The absolute scariest Mon in the game. I go for the plus one Sunny Day Boosted Weather Ball 
and that does take care of the Moltres. So just like that, we're able to just wipe half of their team with freaking Blossom, which is always a fantastic time to see. I do wish that I wasn't Life Orb, but at this point, we actually are in a great spot. They are down to two Pokemon left, and on the empty battlefield, I decide I'm gonna go into the Hitmon top. Main reason is because of this asshole over here, King Gambit is generally gonna be a Supreme Overlord ability. I decide I come in, I get that Intimidate, and I'm like, oh, uh-oh, it is actually Defiant, and that is why King Gambit is a bitch. It actually now gets an attack boost, and this thing is a massive threat. I also realized that this is kind of the perfect candidate for them to kind of be their Terra. So I decide, rather than Mach Plunge, I'm gonna click Earthquake if it's like a Terra Fairy or something like that. Turns out, it's actually horrible for me either way. <laughs> it's gonna be Terra Flying, and now this thing is gonna be floating above my Earthquake, and I'm like, uh-oh, I... I'm in a bad spot here. I don't have really any offensive pressure here with the Hitmon top. I've given it a Defiant boost, and now it goes for the Swords Dance. So, here's the thing. This uh, King Gambit is definitely going to wipe the floor with my ass, and I am frightened. But there is one thing that I can do here. First of all, Hitmon top just needs to be sacked. And, you know, before I go down, I can at least get a, a minuscule chip with a Mach Punch. And I do die to an Iron Head. So, that does take me out, because this thing has like 5,000 attack right now. And uh, there's one thing that I can do. And here's the plan. I can actually go into the Grafaii. Now, Grafaii needs to, would ideally need to be alive for a few different things here. First of all, setting up the sun enables, you know, uh, Sko Villain. I do, in fact, still die from a Sucker Punch in that scenario, though. So what I can actually do is go for the Encore. This is actually really nice because ordinarily you can't go for this on things like a King Gambit because of that Dark type as Prankster doesn't work against Dark types. But since it's Flying type, I can Encore it into the Iron Head, and that is at least going to keep me going for a bit longer here because as Sucker Punch would wipe my entire team, now it's stuck into going for the Iron Head. So what I can actually do now is bring in the Moltres, who I know can surely take uh, an Iron Head here, but sadly does not have enough damage with a Flamethrower. So I'm like, you know what, I might as well try for as much possible damage as I can get uh, and go for that Terra Fire, as uh, the Sko Villain being his Terra type is actually ground. It's not really going to help me uh, in the scenario where, of course, the last Pokemon is actually Urshifu. So uh, I put the candles on my head and Choice Scarf Moltres is about to do its thing and go burn in some stuff. Really hoping for like a crit here, but it doesn't really matter a whole lot as uh, it is going to live as King Gabbit just straight up never dies, and again, they being stuck into the Iron Head is fantastic. And also, since it touches me, it gets the Flame Body, which always seems to happen when it never matters, because, of course, them being burnt in this situation doesn't really do anything for us, just because now I can actually outspeed and kill with the Flamethrower. So, we have effectively neutralized the massive threat that is freaking, what is it, plus, what is it, plus four? King Gambit, this thing is a insane. Balloons are going to be popped, party is over, and now the final Pokemon is the Urshifu. And of course, it is going to be the Urshifu Rapid Strike with uh, the freaking water type guy. This is the uh, most, this is probably the worst possible Pokemon for them to have in their last slot. So, um, Urshifu at this point, we have a couple different options. Either I switch into Scoville to sack, get back in Moltres and then go for an Air Slash and potentially flinch, or what I decide to opt for here is to go for the Flamethrower. I know that I'll outspeed. I can get some chip here and roll for a potential burn chance, not only with the 10% uh, with the Flamethrower, but then I know they have to touch me, and I have that 30% chance with the Flame Body, and sadly, it does not happen. So here's the thing, a burn in that situation solidifies me the game there, as Scovillain is uh, literally paper thin. It, you, can li you can punch right through this guy. He literally bruises like a summer peach. But uh, I bring in Scovillain here, and sadly I'm not quite fast enough, as uh, all I can do is just hope that somehow uh, the most overpowered damn move in the game doesn't kill me. But of course, it, again, this thing is base 65 defense, and uh, the third Surging Strikes is definitely going to take care of me. So down goes the Skill Villain. And uh, it was kind of a toss up there at the end game. I definitely misplayed uh, against King Gambit, as I really needed Sun Up for Skill Villain. Uh, but Grafaii was just kind of tied, where it was like, there was only so many things I could make it do. Um, uh, again, Urshifu, freaking literally the most broken mod in the game, was the worst possible thing for them to have as their last slot. But it is what it is. Honestly, still a super good game, and uh, I had a whole lot of fun with it. So, thank you guys very much for watching. For real, I do appreciate all the support. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.